In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the simulation and posting from inside of Bobcad Cam. Now, to start the simulation, we need to be clicked first just anywhere inside of the cam tree, really under milling job or under, it could be turning job, wire EDM job, mill turn job, whatever it is, we want to be clicked on there because that's going to give us the milling or turning contextual menu. If we click on cam defaults, we'll see that that menu disappears. So the first way to get into the simulation is to say start simulation here up at the top of the screen. We also have a little button right here, which is a shortcut to get into the simulation, or you could right click on the milling job and launch the simulation. So I'm just going to say start simulation and we'll wait for it to load. Now that the simulation's loaded, the first thing we want to take a look at is just the quick access toolbar right here, because if you have a small screen, you can actually shrink up and minimize that tool ribbon, but you still have your playback options up here at the top. So you have play, you have stop, you have fast forward, next operation, restart, and then your simulation speed. Now, if I bring the ribbon back, we have all different ways of how we see this part get cut. Now, currently I'm on the option called material removal mode. Material removal is going to show us the material being removed. This is the way that I use the simulation 99.999% of the time. But you also have an option called backplot, where essentially we open up a solid model copy of your part, and you just see how the tool is going to move around the part. Right here, we have our different modes. We have NC mode, time mode, and length mode. It's just a difference in how we view the simulation as it runs. I prefer to use length mode because it shows you a truer view of how the tool is going to be moving around the part. Sometimes with NC mode, which is the default, sometimes with that one, a straight line will just kind of just get cut. You really won't see the tool feed across it. You'll just see it start at one end and end up at the next end if it's a straight line. So I like to use the length mode. Next to that, we have how we view the part. So we have workpiece stock, which means as we cut, the part is going to stay locked in position and we're going to see the tool move around it. We have a machine view if you have Machine Simulation Pro. And we also have a tool view where we lock the tool and then move the part around the tool. So like I said, I like to use workpiece stock because it locks my part in place and I don't have to see the part move all around. Right here, we have our different playback settings. Again, we have pause, we have stop, fast forward, step forward, previous and next op, restart, and then the overall simulation speed. So if I say run and I turn this down, it's gonna run much, much slower. But if I turn it way up, it's gonna run way faster. So I like to have it in a good view. That lets me see my part the way I want. Right here we have a fit option, so it's gonna fit everything to the screen. We could change our view to isometric. We could do a top, a front, a right, a bottom, a back, a left, and that's all our different views. So I'll go back to my isometric. Now if I move this tab over here, all three of these tabs over to the right, It'll expand this next one, which is what we view when we see the part running. So if I turn on toolpath, it's going to show the toolpath that is currently cutting. If I turn it off, it'll hide the toolpath. Next to that, we have our tool, whether or not we're showing it, whether it's opaque, whether it's transparent, or whether we hide it completely. And we, and we can still continue to see the part get cut. So I'll turn that back on. Now, if I had added in a fixture, the fixture would show up here. Same with a workpiece. If I have a workpiece, which I do, it's my solid model that represents the final finished part. So the solid that we have over here on the layers has been added in as the workpiece, and I can get a copy of it. So I can compare the part that I drew to the part that I'm cutting and see if we're close. And then finally, we have our stock, which is whether or not we want to show it, make it transparent, or hide it. And I'll go ahead and say show. And then the initial stock. So this is what the stock looked like at the start of the job. And then if you have the Machine Simulation Pro, you also have machine housing. And it's part of the machine that doesn't really move with the table. It's just kind of part of the machine itself. So not something we need right now. 
Right here we have toolpath rendering. Now all these options get grayed out because we have the toolpath blanked out. So let me fit everything. If I turn the toolpath on and I go to toolpath rendering, we can see how it's set up. Now currently it's set up to show me all ops and it's just following them. So we're gonna see all the ops as they get created. I like to set this to just the current op. So I'm seeing just the operation that's currently running, but I also like to turn it to segment. That way it only shows me a small segment of the toolpath as it runs around. And I don't have to worry about turning the toolpath on or off anymore. It's kind of always in the setting that I want. Now, right here we have some options. So the first thing we see is our move list. So let me move this over a little bit. We have our move list, which shows us all of our different operations as well as all the movements they're making. Now this is not G code. It's just how the tool's moving about the simulation. Right here we have our toolpath analysis. And if we look closely, we'll see that the blue shade of the toolpath itself matches this blue right here. The flatlands will be this faint green that we have here. And so it's just lighting up the toolpath with a specific color so we can see exactly which path is running at any given time. Now under statistics, we just have our statistics. So this is gonna give us our feed rates as we're running. If I scroll down though, I can go all the way down to the bottom and see the total machining time. So we'll see this is gonna take one hour and six minutes at the current feeds and speeds that I have set up. Right here, we then just have our machine. This is just a generic machine, nothing really to do here. Right here we have our simulation tab. So we can tell it to stop on any tool changes or operation changes. We could also say stop on say block 500 and it'll stop when it gets there. And then we have on bookmarks and you could actually bookmark your move list. Down at the bottom you could say stop on any new chip detection and stop when the tool tip gets to a certain position. Not really something I use. I usually just leave it on move list. This way I can fast forward through ops just by clicking on them. So what we'll see now is it's gonna load past the advanced rough. And now we're working on the Flatlands toolpath. Down at the bottom, we have our report tab. So if there's any collisions, they will be reported here. And then we have our cut sim tab. So this is just our, just our overall accuracy to the part. Leaving it on medium is a good place to be. Uh, we could tell it to go up or down from there. We could even see where we're checking for flutes, any just collision checks for the flutes, the shaft, the arbor, and the holder. This is also where we go. If, when we're done, we like the finish on this and we want to save that stock as an STL. We could save it as an STL. The analysis, now this is part analysis. So if I change this to say tool number, what we'll see is that the three inch face mill that we use turns the part blue. Anything that it cuts turns it this shade of blue. Anything that the ball end mill touches is going to turn it this shade of kind of a greenish blue. And if we double click on that, we could actually change it. So I'll say, let's make it red and hit okay. Now refresh and anything that shows up that's red means it was touched by this half inch ball mill right here. And I like to leave that one to none. So we just see one solid color throughout. Next to that, we have our axis control. So you'll see how the axes are moving as they're cutting. And then finally, we have our measure mode, which not only allows us to measure points and distances, the way you're gonna measure them is by using your middle mouse wheel and clicking on the model wherever you wanna generate the point. So I could say, give me that point right there. It'll pop up over here with the calculation on where that point is inside the simulation. And to get rid of them, you could just remove all items. You could also use this for removing chips. Now this part doesn't really lend itself to this, but remove chips allows us to remove any pieces of geometry that are no longer connected to the solid model. And then down here at the bottom, we have our progress bar. So we can see the first toolpath ran for about that long. There's our second, we're on our third now. So we have a few toolpaths left, but you can see they're much quicker than this initial set of toolpaths that we did. So it's gonna just go from end to end. You can actually grab this and fast forward and we'll see now it's going to continue cutting the other side, even though we didn't have to sit through the whole thing. Now up under the verification tab, we can show an apply or refine, which means if we zoom in on this and it doesn't look clean, apply or refine, and it'll show you a better view of it. Now the thing is Bobcat actually does that for you. When you finish a part, so let me speed this up so it finishes all these cuts. When you finish a part and you zoom in, it'll actually do a cleanup pass. It's right down here. It says automatic quality improvement of the view area. So anything that's in my view area is gonna get a higher quality boost to it. 
so we can find out if it's all good, everything's fine, or if we need to go back and refinish some areas. And then finally, we have our view tab, and this is how we view different parts of this model. So we could say maximize a view. We could tell it to give us four views. So I could take each individual view and rotate it a different way. And then if I hit play again, it's going to reset all of this and start cutting. So I can actually see it in different views and how they work. I'm going to go back to maximize here. And then right here, we have just all of our tabs. If we don't need the simulation tab, or in my case, I don't need the machine tab, I could turn that off and it's going to take it out of the list right there. If I want to bring it back, I could turn it back on. Now, if you accidentally close some of these boxes like I am here, you can see them shut down just by me hitting these X's. I can actually go in and say reset, and it's going to reset the user interface kind of back to factory defaults for me. So it's going to reset everything just in case I made a mistake. Now, when I'm all done, after I've seen my simulation, I like the way it looks, we could either click on stop simulation here, or we can use this little X in the corner. Now make sure not to go too far and grab that X, just this one right here. So I'll click that. It's gonna shut down the simulation and then I'll open this view back up. Now to post the code, there's a few different ways to do this. The first one is the big button at the top that says post. We click on that, it's gonna generate the code and put it right there. We could also click on this little button that looks like a controller in this quick access toolbar, and that's also going to post the code. We could even right click on our milling job and say post. We could even go down to a specific operation like an advanced rough, right click, and we could say post on that, and it's only going to post the advanced rough. Or in my case, let me go down to the drilled hole. Let's see just the chamfer. So we'll post that. We'll see this is just the code for that one chamfer toolpath. So there's a few different ways to post your code. Now, after you post your code, so if I post the whole job again, we could then right click inside the code and say save as, which is automatically gonna save it as whatever default file extension we have set up for our machine. And you can pick the folder you wanna save it in and save it. We could also right click and go to the NC editor, which we'll look at in the next video. And the NC editor allows you to modify the code as well as backplot it if you have the NC Editor Pro. So you can actually run through the code and get a simulation built based off of the code. So again, to post the code, we just say post, and then you're normally just gonna right click and say save as, or if we click the bottom of this button, there is an option called post and save as, which allows us to post the code, but immediately save it. So we don't have to save as later on. And that concludes the video on the simulation and posting inside of Bobcat Cam.